Hi, Lori here with chapter 18 and pretty excited that we only have two more chapters to go after this. What is finance? Well, it's about acquiring and managing funds for your firm. You need to obtain the funds and you do this via issuing debt or equity, selling equity. You manage your funds um, and this means managing your bank accounts and your investments and then you collect your funds. Uh, this is called cash management and it's making sure that you get your money back from the people you have loaned it out to in the form of credit. You need to plan, budget, and audit your results and you do need to do this both on an operational basis and a tax basis. Taxes can form a major expense for firms so they are separately managed and often planned out well in advance. And finally, you're going to advise top management on all things financial. Where things can go wrong? Well, the first place we can get in trouble is being undercapitalized. Most firms do not set aside or, or start up with enough cash to get them through the startup. They're too optimistic about their plans. They think things are going to go well. And then as things slow down, go a little more slowly than they expect, they end up being surprised and running out of cash. So we want to make sure we have enough cash on hand to get through startup and a, set aside a big buffer so that if it takes longer than we expect or costs more than we can expect, we can still be here at the end of the startup process. Also, a lot of firms suffer from poor cash control. Remember, cash is king. Pretty simple rule here. Cash in needs to be greater than cash out. Lack of expense control is the third place where people go wrong. And here you need to make sure that what you earn is greater than what you spend. These are very simple rules, and I feel confident you guys can follow them when you start up your own businesses. Financial planning. Well, it's about creating a plan based on short-term and long-term forecasting. Short-term forecasting is the next year or so, and long-term forecasting is usually three to five years. It is easier to do short-term forecasting. There's a lot more certainty, but it's very important to look out beyond the short term to three to five years so you have some idea what you need to plan for in the future. To do financial planning, you develop a master budget, and this includes both the capital budget, your operating budget, and your cash budget. Capital budget is what you're going to spend on plant, equipment, land, buildings, that sort of thing. Um, and your cash budget indicates when cash is going to come in and when cash is going to go out. It is just as important as your operating budget, which is when your revenue is going to come in and when your expenses are going to be paid um, or be recorded. Because in the end, if you don't have the cash, it doesn't matter how good your books look, you're not going to be in business. You're going to set up financial control so you know what is happening, and you're going to use two elements for this. One is financial statements, and we looked at those last chapter, and that's the income statement and the balance sheet, along with the cash statement or statement of cash flows. Um, and then you're also going to have a report that does your actual results versus your budget, and that allows you to track both revenue and expenses and see if you are on track or not. Obviously, cash is king. I think I'm definitely repeating myself. In order to man manage your cash, you want to manage when you pay your expenses and pay them as slowly as possible. You want to manage when you collect money. You want to collect early, so you pay late, collect early. You want to use supplier financing or trade credit whenever possible because that's usually the cheapest credit available and they don't usually require um, guarantees or uh, financial statements. And you need to delay your capital expenditures until you're sure you can afford them. And you need to look seriously at some options like leasing equipment, borrowing equipment um, from another firm in the area that might not be using it, or buying your equipment used when you do go to buy it. Where are you going to get your money? Well, short-term financing, you're going to look to trade credit, which we just talked about. That's your suppliers. You can look to friends and family, but remember that comes with a price tag that may be more than just the interest you need to pay. Credit cards have been used, um, but you need to be very wary of these. They have tremendously large interest payments that kick in if you miss any payments at all. Uh, commercial banks, you can get a secured loan, which means it's collateralized, or they own they <clears throat> they have a right to own something that you currently own if you don't pay the bank, or unsecured, which means they're just loaning you the money and hoping you will pay it back. You can also get a line of credit or a revolving credit agreement. A line of credit means that you can borrow if they're still willing to let you borrow. A revolving credit agreement means they guarantee that they will give you the money. You can go to commercial finance companies like GE Capital. You can do factoring, and that's where you go to a bank or a finance company and you sell them your accounts receivable. So you actually move an asset off your balance sheet, and in return they give you cash, but they don't give you cash 
equal to the full amount of the accounts receivable, they factor it or reduce it um, for the in order for them to make a profit. So you may be able to sell your accounts receivable for 75 cents on the dollar, which means that if you're owed $100,000 in accounts receivable, you would receive $75,000 from the bank. And then finally, you can issue commercial paper, um, but this is for big companies only. And if you just remember that it's um, usually due within 30 to 60 days, although you can pay it, it can be outstanding for up to 270. Where to get your long-term financing? Well, you can go to the bank. You can issue debt by going to the bank. It's called a term loan agreement, and you agree to pay a certain amount of interest, and you may agree to other covenants, but in general, they give you the money, and you agree to pay it back in a certain way. You can also go to the bond market and issue bonds under what's called an indenture agreement, and these can be secured, like mortgage bonds, which are secured by property, uh, secured by land and buildings, or they can be unsecured, which means they're going on your word that you will pay them back. You can also get long-term financing from equity. The best way to do this is um, retained earnings. That's where you finance yourself. The, another option is to sell stock in the company. You can sell it to the public. And the first time you do this, it's called an IPO or initial public offering. Or you can sell your stock privately to venture capitalists. To use debt or to use equity. Well, this depends on your cost of capital. How much does your debt cost? How much does your equity cost? We don't know, and we're not going to figure that out in this class, but if you take Finance 301, which is a great course, you'll find out how to do that. Overall, debt tends to be cheaper but riskier, so it be, and that's because if you run into a cash flow problem, you won't be able to service your debt, and um, servicing your debt means paying the interest plus the principal due on a monthly basis. Equity partners may be more willing to wait for their return, and that's it, except I want to cover the big ideas from the chapter. Remember, financial planning is key. You can't manage it in, if you don't monitor it. The risk-return trade-off, that's the idea that as you take more risk, you want to make sure you get more return, and cash is king. Thanks very much for listening.